unusual prediction behavior of HTMJS. Uh, I haven't tried HTMJS yet uh, very hard, <laughs> but uh, I'm planning on it. I probably will. When, when we get to the point of building HTM systems where we're writing a spatial pooler, I'm certainly going to go look and see how Paul did it. <laughs> and it might be, we, we're going we're gonna to build it ourselves, but we're going to build an example. And, I, and if the code, I want the code to be super clean. And I, I, we'll see. Um, we could use it and then modify it, you know, and add lots of comments. And um, Jimmy is using HTMJS and Hobby Project, seeing something might be a bug. Uh, oh, and he reproduced, reproduced it in the piano demo. Paul has a piano demo. Where's your piano demo? I think, I think it's in here. Here it is. Here's Paul's piano demo. So he's got some can, we're just going to use these can parameters here. It's running a temporal memory on it. Bursting, 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 bursting. <laughs> some bursting, some not. See, it's, it's actually working. It's cool. Um, anyway, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch HTM School on Temporal Memory. It's episode 11. Um, this is a, a good, a nice interactive visualization. Uh, you can see that right here if you like. And um, anyway, back to. So through the de browser debugger, you can see that for a single layer in the example, the distal input reaches 20 predictive cells after a few notes, stays there for a couple notes, then goes back to empty. Then it leaps to 40 predictive cells, but falls back to 20 and then empty. Each time it resets to a number 20 higher than the last initial count decays in batches of 20 until there are none. This is why the none prediction interval gradually increases. Played around with a bunch of layer properties and looked relevant, but doesn't seem to impact the behavior. If you ever encountered this and you need sleep, that's very nice. I'm gonna... He's a community helper. When you, when you report a bug on somebody else's code like that, that's very, that's good karma. Seriously, good karma. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but this isn't a bug in um, Paul's code. It's it's an attribute of H of temporal memory, <clears throat> um, and it's because because uh, there's no resets, right? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> so, Jimmy, you've just run into pro I would say the biggest problem with temporal memory as it's implemented in, in Nupik and um, in our papers is that you need some way to, um, when you're doing sequence learning, sequences end. All sequences at some point should end. I would think, I mean, most sequences in the real world end. You know, there's a beginning of things and an end of things. Um, like just for example, if a car drives by and you're just talking about the input to that car, there's a beginning and, input and end to that experience. Now, that's a sequence. You could encode that as a memory sequence. Um, and the biggest problem with this is you have to tell it when it ends. Like we, that's what the, that's what forcing a reset is. You're telling it, this is the end of the sequence. And in real life, there's something else. I don't know what that's closing those sequences. It's most likely it has some, it has to do with attention, but I'm not, I don't know what it is. Um, and so you can try pooling over top of those layers and never closing any sequences. And, um, but that's, but then this is the problem that you're, what you're seeing is a symptom of the problem we're run, running into. Um, good answer. Good answer. 